name's Peter Clapton. I'm the, the motion capture manager at the Great Assembly. Uh, we've, we've recently built, as you've seen today, our new motion capture suite, um, of which I'm in charge of. I run a lot of the shoots and uh, that's, that's, that's pretty much it. Cool. Um, can you just talk a bit about where you've come from um, as, a, as a motion capture artist and, and kind of how you've built up to this, this magnificent setup that we have here now? Yes, yeah, certainly. Um, well, I'll start with that. Right, yeah, so I've been animating for about 25 years. Um, started as a hobby, really. Uh, about 10 years ago, I decided to take myself off back to university, do a degree, um, and take it up professionally. So I managed to secure myself a position at the Creative Assembly. Um, and at the same time, you know, they have a motion capture system already at that time um, of about 10 cameras. Um, we were increasing on a steady basis about two cameras a year. Um, and then an opportunity arose for us to, to purchase a bulk number of additional cameras. Um, and the company at that time decided it would be you know, the right time to invest in having our own facility and, and our own premises um, to give us greater accessibility to the use of the motion capture system. You know, I, I've, uh, as I said to you earlier on, we, we've increased the number of animations that we're going to do over the same period of time by about 50%. Um, that's obviously not going to exponentially happen every year, but it does give us the chance now, having our own place, to do a lot more um, development, research and pre-visualisation of uh, animation processes that we have, what will work, what won't work. Um, we also currently have two projects on the go, so you know, we, we're utilising for both projects. Um, it's not just a total war facility now, it's, it's become a bigger beast than that. So. There's always been an element of uh, motion capture being a way of cheating animation, um, but with the, the way that we're trying to enhance realism within our games, um, you will get a more real positive performance from a human performer, um, which is then obviously passed on to an animator to put their own spin on that. Um, I think there's, there will always be that element of people who, animators that, that don't feel that it will benefit them. Um, I think that the main benefit of having a motion capture system is the speed at which you can work. I know their own feel to the animation um, rather than taking a performance, actual performance and just sticking with it. They can then still enhance it to their own artistic you know, development mm. that they want to go to. For one specific type of move, I mean, even if it's a walk cycle, we will, we will do 20 different walk cycles, um, cut those up into sections, um, create loops out of them, so out of those 20 you could probably get 30, 40 different walk cycles um, just from one actor on, on you know, an hour's worth of shooting. Uh, and that's, you know, so the variation is built up from um, doing the same take over and over again effectively. Um, but they are all effectively then individual performances, so you're still getting what you're seeing on the screen isn't just something that's just been slightly changed. They are all a mass of individual performances. So. And when that, when that goes into the game, I mean, how does it, um, how does the, the code in the background, how does that pick what animations to use? Is it, is it randomised or are they set? So when, uh, if you played the same bit over and over again, would you see the same animations each time? No, you wouldn't see the same animations each time. Um, they are weighted. There are certain animations, I and mean, Death Ones are always the classic we have. In Shogun, we had some quite long death sequences that are about 15, 20 seconds long of some guy wailing and flinging his arms around. Um, you wouldn't want to see that every time someone dies. So we, we do have the ability to only play that you know, like 1% of the time. Um, so you do get you know, that ability to be able to manipulate that. Some of my favourite pieces have been the ones that I've done myself. <laughs> uh, um, which were, funnily enough, some of the Shogun long death sequences, which uh, were, were quite a stunning performance by <laughs> were, me. Were you the killer or the killing? I was, I, was the, I was the guy dying, yeah. <clears throat> um, but um, 
I mean, I, I quite, I quite enjoy seeing the fight performance doing the thing because they really are going for it. It's not just, you know, uh, yeah, it's choreographed in some respects, but we'll just tell them sort of kind of what we want, and they will go out there and hammer it out with each other. Um, I mean, there have been bruises, cuts, you know, all these things that have been going on, but it's it's quite an amazing thing to see. Um, I mean, the hardest part of my job kind of is involved with that side of it because that's the hardest part of the day to clean up. Um, I mean, I've developed a, a, a whole bunch of scripts that allow me to automate that process quite a lot. And with single person capture, there's very little I have to do to that data afterwards. Um, when you have two fight performers that close in combat, um, you tend to have to do a lot of manual cleanup with those. So as much as it's nice to watch it and see it happening, you know that it's going to cause your own grief. Once in your shoes, I said